It looks and smells so good. Oh yeah. Hey everyone, I'm Flo, dude is behind the camera. We just wanted to say thank you to all of you who participated in our poll on YouTube. And if you don't know where that is, there is a community tab on the channel and you can click that to take polls or uh, leave us comments. It's a way for us to communicate with you. So if you wanna check it out, click the tab. On the last poll, we asked what kind of cuisine you would like to see, and there was an overwhelming response to Asian. So today we are making chicken. I don't know what to call it yet because it's something that my grandmother used to make for me week to week when I would go over for dinner. But I'm going to try using the Instant Pot to make it today and hopefully it'll turn out just as good. All written recipes are available to my patrons on Patreon and you can find out more information below. So let's get started. I am starting with a pound and a half of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. There's about 10 smallish pieces in there. And I have half an ounce of ginger. It's about a, a thumb size knob. Uh, who's got a thumb that big though? <laughs> You know, when I see that, I always think of the cartoons like Bugs Bunny or whatever when they accidentally hammer their thumb and it grows into like this big swollen size. <laughs> I said half an ounce. I measured it this time. I am slicing it into thin slices. I'm adding that to the chicken. And remember guys, my recipes are always simple using ordinary ingredients that the whole family will enjoy. And this recipe is super nostalgic to me because it was, again, something my grandmother made for me every single week because when you tell your grandmother that you like something, chances are they're going to make it every single time because you like it until you get sick of it. <laughs> and you know what, I'm gonna bet my last dollar that she didn't come up with this recipe from some written thing that she had. No, my grandmother didn't. No, you know what? My grandmother was uneducated, so she didn't even know how to read or write, and everything's just in her head. So if you ask her for a recipe for anything, she's just like, oh, just a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I just got to figure it out all on my own. Mm -hmm. Now, this isn't her exact recipe, because I don't remember if she used ginger, but my mom said, Whenever I'm cooking chicken, I have to have ginger. I don't know what that is or why that is, but that's what she says. So I am adding ginger to this recipe. I'm going to use about a tablespoon of soy sauce and one tablespoon of dark soy. And dark soy is different from light soy, but if you don't have dark soy, just double the light well, or regular soy. On the bottles that I buy, it actually says light on there and dark. But you can just use two tablespoons of regular soy sauce. I'm also using a tablespoon of oyster sauce. It's a new bottle. I don't know why. So well, there's all this pressure inside, so that's why you're struggling with it. Like, like ketchup. I have a teaspoon of sugar. If you don't want to add sugar, don't add sugar. But for us, it's all about the balance of flavor. And we're going to add about a teaspoon of cornstarch. Just stir that around. And we're going to let that marinate for, you know what, not very long. Usually I would marinate it for about half an hour, but today, I'm just going to set this aside, heat up my Instant Pot and get started. So my grandmother would normally cook this on the stovetop in a cast iron pan, but I am going to sear it in the Instant Pot and cook it for a few minutes under pressure. And hopefully it will come out somewhat similar. Using saute mode, I'm adjusting it to high heat. And meanwhile, I am also going to chop up an onion. My grandmother also did not use onion, but I figure in the Instant Pot it's going to create a gravy and I'm going to use the onion to flavor that gravy as well. 
So it would be kind of like an onion sauce on chicken. And around here, we love that gravy on rice. Yes, we do. When my grandmother made this in the cast iron pan, she didn't make a gravy with it. It was just pan fried and then whatever flavor was just seared into the meat. So this is different. It's not exactly the same, but it'll still be really yummy. It's not the same because grandma didn't make it, that's why. So I take both ends off the onion, slice it in half, and in, you can slice it however you want. I'm gonna slice it this way. I was watching an episode of Knife Skills with Jacques Pepin this week, and he said that you need a really sharp knife to cut through onions because if you use a dull knife, you're squishing more, did you say sulfur? Well, it's um, you're squeezing more or you're releasing more of a compound that has sulfur in it and that makes you tear up. The only time I've ever cut myself with a knife is when I'm using a dull knife. So it's best to just sharpen your knives, use little effort when slicing and dicing and you'll be fine. I'm using olive oil today. Normally I would use a more neutral oil because uh, of the flavor, but this is all I have today because I'm out and I forgot to pick some up. So about two tablespoons of olive oil. Make sure it's coated on the bottom. Because there's sauce on the, on the chicken, it will splatter, so just FYI. We're gonna do half at a time and we'll lay them flat on the bottom. I'm just gonna flip them over. It's been about two minutes. Just gonna cook for two minutes on the other side. These would also be great on the grill. It's one of the reasons why I don't really like using the Instant Pot to sear meat because it doesn't, um, it doesn't work like a cast iron would. The heat remains constant in a cast iron pan. Whereas here, the heat fluctuates on saute mode. So when I put the first few pieces of chicken in, the last one, probably the temperature of the pot had gone down. So the last piece I put in there stuck on the bottom. Okay, it's only been about a minute. I'm taking them out. So I don't want them to overcook either. As much as I love using my chopsticks because of the oil splatter, the longer tongs do a better job of flipping them. It's been about a minute on the other side. I'm just gonna remove it. Okay, adding the onions into the pot. And see, look, there's so many brown bits down there that need to be deglazed. This onion will do a great job. Because as the onion releases liquid, it will start to break up the brown bits at the bottom. So the onion didn't do as good a job as I was expecting it to. I think, I, I think because of the sauce of the chicken kind of um, cooked well on the bottom of the pot, didn't get out the brown bits as much as I'd like. So I am adding a quarter cup of water. And we're gonna scrape the bottom to deglaze. And that will make a really yummy gravy. Look at that. So all the brown bits are coming off. And if you need more liquid, just add a little bit more. Don't add too much. But the burning question is, Flo, can you add bourbon? <laughs> if you really wanted to. You know what, if it was my mom, she would have added um, some, some sort of liquor. <laughs> cooking wine. Did you add cooking, cooking wine? Cooking wine, not liquor. She would have added some sort of cooking wine to the marinade. I'm turning off the saute mode. And if you look in the pot, it is sufficiently deglazed. So look at that. It was all like pretty black at the bottom, but all the brown bits have been scraped up. And I'm going to add my chicken back in, along with any juices, right on top of this onion. Well, not only does it uh, serve to deglaze for flavor and the sauce, but if you don't deglaze that burnt layer, it's gonna overheat. Yes, that's right. And you don't want that burnt message on your pot. So look at all the juices that accumulated on the plate. So I'm just gonna pour that all in. And that will be enough liquid to make sure that the pot comes up to pressure. It, it smells, smells really good. It does, it does. Thank goodness this mess. I'm gonna wipe down some of this grease before I put my lid on. 
Okay, put your lid on, lock it into place, making sure the ceiling knob is on ceiling. And we are only gonna cook this for about three minutes because it was pretty much cooked all the way through. You only need a few minutes to kind of make sure all the flavors, I don't know what to say, <laughs> are and elevated flavors. together. Yes. Yes. Two. Okay, that was super fast. I'm quick releasing the steam now. Yes, <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Did you get my face? Oh, they look really good. And in case you all didn't know, they're, you know, the little slots in your, now these only come with your duo and up. I don't think the Lux models have this, but maybe the newer ones do. The old ones didn't. But did you know that little slot is for the Instant Pot lid? I'm gonna remove the chicken and I've noticed that the sauce is actually quite thin. So I would like to thicken it up with some cornstarch slurry. I'm gonna turn the saute mode on low and make my cornstarch slurry. I have one teaspoon of cornstarch and I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of water or equal amounts anyways, that's what I'm aiming for. You have to dissolve cornstarch in cold water, otherwise it won't dissolve. It'll just be one lumpy mess. And I think I've done that to myself before. What's that, make a lumpy mess? Oh uh, yeah, with uh, warm or hot water. Hmm. It has to be at least room temperature or cold water is best. Okay. And once it starts to simmer again, it's ready to go. And you can add more slurry if this is still not thick enough for you, but it's sufficient for me. Oh boy, that looks good. Mm. Oh, it does look good. It looks and smells so good. Oh yeah. I know you're all ready for. Oh. The taste. I really enjoy these segments, especially when you are cooking something that is nostalgic. And the reason why is that it brings in story. I get to hear uh, you talk about the past and the stuff that our parents and our grandparents cooked for us. Those are the things that we grew up with and when tastes and smells uh, trigger those memories, I, I love it. So uh, I think we all need to address those things that uh, we grew up with, those recipes and bring them back and try them out. So I'm really excited about this. Did you ever get a chance to try this at my grandma's? I don't think so. The first memory I get usually when I think about your grandma is that how she forever uh, got my name wrong. <laughs> and for those who don't know, my legal name isn't dude. Maybe I, I might consider it, but she called me for whatever reason, Tommy. So it's like, ah, Tommy. All right, here it goes. Here's the awkward part of the taste when I got to chew through a piece of meat. So let's um, speed it up. You also have a tendency to chew for a very long time. Flo just shovels food in. It's like, oh, it's just a huge bite where Dan just, well, Whatever. I will chew it because it's best for your digestive system. That's what I, I think. I eat like a normal person. You call me a freak. <laughs> the marinade is definitely in there. It's not like it's just coated and uh, flavorless inside. You can see even that the pressure cooker managed to, you know, drive in some of that color from the soy sauce. The onions, thank you for not pulverizing it into nothingness. Uh, it still goes great with rice. As in terms of um, the stovetop slash cast iron versus the Instant Pot, I, I gotta say that the cast iron is delivers a better char. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like it's those brown bits. Yeah, you browned it, but it's not quite the intense char that you would get on the cast iron. So I gotta go with the cast iron for ultimate flavor. I don't know about convenience sake, but hey, you know, use the best tool for the job. In this case, if you got an Instapot and you wanna use it, rock it, go for it. And it delivers big time with a simple meal of rice and a leafy Chinese vegetable 
which sounds simplistic, but together it makes a great meal. Mm. Good. Thanks, dude. Mm -hmm. As dude mentioned, it is easy on the stovetop, it is easy in the Instant Pot, and it is easy on the grill if you want to put it out on the grill instead. But also, instead of leaving the thigh pieces whole, you can always chop them up into smaller pieces, use the same marinade, and do a stir fry with another vegetable instead of onion. So there's, this recipe is super versatile. Uh, we're gonna have it with some rice and some green leafy vegetables. Oh, do you wanna see what the green leafy vegetable yeah, yeah, looks like? Yeah, let's bring it up. This is called yao choy. In English, it's yu choy. <laughs> I've never seen it spelled like that, actually. It's usually spelled Y-U-E. I've never bought them this big before, but so long as they're fresh and they're, they look good, that the leaves are not yellowing, that there is no flower blooming. Oh, there is a little bit. Not too much anyway. Yeah, you want to take these um, yellow flowers off. My dad told me that's where the bugs hide. So mm -hmm. if you don't want to eat extra protein, take those off. And at the bottom, make sure that it's not white. As soon as it starts, if there's a little white dot in the middle, sometimes they're bigger, it means that it is an old vegetable and it's starting to dry out through the middle. So we're gonna try to communicate with you all a little bit more regularly on the community page. So make sure that you check that community tab, wherever it is on your screen on the channel. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you subscribe, I think also gives you notification of when we post something on the community page and check out my cookbook here and more recipes off to the side. Till next time, be simple, ordinary, and joyful.